In today's video, I'm really excited to introduce you to Unity Poly Special Play to Device. This tool is really cool because it's going to allow you to do fast development by actually hitting play on the Unity editor and seeing those changes right away, either on the simulator or the physical device. So today I'm gonna show you all about it. We're gonna go through the actual setup process. We're gonna look at some dependencies that we're gonna need. And I'm gonna show you a few demos of how you can use this fully. And I'm also going to start with a couple of facts that I think you're gonna find interesting. AirKit was first introduced with iOS 11 on June 5th, 2017 during the Worldwide Developers Conference. It was continuously updated each following year. Tell me, why do you tell me this fact? Well, let's keep reading. In August 3rd of 2017, Unit releases ARKit Remote. It allows you to run a special application on the iOS device, which feeds ARKit data back to the Unity editor, allowing you to react to data in real time in the Unity editor. So let's keep reading. In June 3rd, 2019, Unity deprecates the ARK plugin, which includes the ARK remote. And yeah, that was a really, really hard time, at least for me, because I started doing development with AR a long time ago. So AR Foundation 2.0, that one releases March 5th, 2019. There were earlier versions than that. There were previous versions on 1.0. So, but this was more like, the stable version of AR Foundation. So, so far we have ARKit being introduced and then we have a special app being developed, which is called the ARKit Remote. And then in 2019, we, you know, we hear from Unity the bad news that Unity actually deprecates the plugin because they want to move to more of a, a cohesive framework or toolkit, which is AR Foundation, right? We want one set of APIs that we can use across multiple devices, and that is what AR Foundation. They support MetaQuest devices, they support iOS, Android, Magic Leap, and so on. So let's keep reading. Uh, Third-party AR Foundation remote releases, and it becomes the must-have AR Foundation companion for AR developers. And this is an app that I use a lot. I use with clients. I recommend to many people. It's a third-party. It's not developed by Unity. I'm not. I'm not sure why Unity never actually work on an AR Foundation remote, but I think it might be because this remote is one of the best. It supports multiple different tools. I think all the tools available with AR Foundation. Anyways, why do I tell you this? Well, we're talking about a remote, right? We're talking about ways to test our devices in, in the Unity editor. So just think about it. If we do a deploy right now to iOS, you have to wait for that to go to the iOS device, and that might take, depending on your computer, it could take, you know, it could be fast, it could be a few minutes, it could be 20 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, it just depends on the capacity of the power of the computer that you're using, and the same thing with Android, it might take longer, and so on. So we need something that is faster to be able to do continuous development, to be able to iterate, to be able to do things in a more optimized manner. But Dilmer, why do we actually need it? And I think I said that in the previous slide, but let, let's talk about it a little bit more. So it's fast developer iteration. That is why it basically allows you to iterate faster. You make a change in Unity, you push it, you hit play, and then you see it right on the device or the simulator. So it just allows us to test a lot quicker. So no more deploys to test your changes. That is not the best use of your time and skills. And it is not, because imagine if you have to add a feature or a small change and you have to wait that time and you go get a coffee, come back. That is not the best use of our time. Coffee is great, but it's not the best use of our time. You wanna make a quick change, you wanna see it right away. And then if you have a bug, you can iterate, make another change and see it right away. So that's pretty much why. So if we keep going, what you do in the Unity Editor is reflected in the Vision OS Simulator or the Apple Vision Pro. So this application can run either on the simulator or the actual physical device. So let me show you how it actually works. You can see that we have the Unity Editor on the right, I'm rotating the cube, and that is reflected right away on the simulator that you can see on the left side. We can scale it. One thing that I really like is this is a bounded experience, which means that we have a set of you know, limits of the experience. And then when the cube goes beyond those limits, it basically gets cut off. So some of those things are really great to be able to test with this tool. So play to device requirements. You're gonna need Unity 2022 LTS, Xcode 15, beta two or greater, Apple Silicon Mac. And then this is a really helpful compatibility matrix that Unity provides on their forums. 
and also on their documentation, which will be linked in below. But it's really important because I couldn't get this to work initially, and that was because I was using an older version of the Play2 device. I was using, I think, 0.5 instead of the 0.6 that is available now. So anyways, the Poly Special version that you need to have for this to work, it's going to be 0.6.0. They only say this version, they don't say greater than that version, but the version that I have right now is 0.6.4, and that works, so that's why I decided to do greater. Then supported Unity versions are gonna be, like I said, LTS in here, 2022.3.11 F1 and greater. Any LTS version, I think it's going to work with this. I tested it with multiple and I didn't have any problems. Require Xcode versions is going to be Xcode 15.1 beta 1 and greater. Require firmware version, which is going to be your Vision OS simulator, your Vision OS basically platform that you're going to be installing through Xcode. Again, I have a video link in the description about that. And then this is pretty interesting because right now they are taking us to a Google Drive. So if you go to the Google Drive, which is going to be by clicking on this link, I'll give you that link as well below, then you're gonna see multiple versions in there. There's gonna be a version that is like, I think is 0 0.5 or, or five something. And then there's also going to be a six. Just look for a five or a six. You wanna make sure that you do the version six. And then if you have the device and you're one of the lucky ones to have it early on, just make sure that you go in and, and join the beta invite that they have in here for test flight basically you're going to be able to accept that invitation and then download the application through test flight on the apple vision pro all right guys so let's go ahead and look at the version compatibility matrix just to make sure that we have everything installed so i'm really excited about these videos so let's go ahead and check the first one so poly special version that's the one that we're going to need so go into window and then package manager and make sure that we have that, which is 0.6.2 is greater than that. So that should satisfy that condition. Supported unit versions, we have 2022.313F1. So that should be good to go. Now, if we look at Xcode, so I'm gonna go ahead and open my Xcode beta version in here. And I already walked you through that process on the previous video. So just make sure that you look at that video. So basically we can go here to about Xcode and I know that I have beta three, so that is greater than beta one and 15.1, so it should be good to go. For the required firmware version, which they're referring to Vision OS, there's two things that I would have you check. So if you open the simulator, if you already have it set up, you can go here to where it says about simulator, and then that's going to be the version that we have installed, which matches the version that we have on Xcode. We can also go back into the actual Xcode. Let me go ahead and pull that out one more time. And then we can go into settings in here and you can also go into platform. So just click on platform. You're gonna see that we have, if we put these two side by side, we have Vision OS Beta 4, which is a minimum requirement. We have Beta 6, so that's going to be, is going to satisfy that condition. The last two are going to be the actual application that is going to be running on the remote device, either on the simulator here or the actual physical device. So if you're the lucky ones to have it, you can do this link. So let me show you those two links. I'm gonna close out of all of these because we don't need it. So the first link is going to be hosted in Google Drive. I think this is just for now during beta. Last time I installed 0.5.0 with the packages that I had and I couldn't connect, I couldn't get it to work. And that's why, because the official documentation only has that version. I already told them about it, so it might be fixed by the time that you check it out. But just make sure that you go to the forums or you look at my links below to be able to get the right link. And this is the one that you need, the 0.6.2 or greater. I'm sure that they'll have a compatibility matrix updated. Just make sure that you keep an eye on that. I'll make sure as well to make sure that everything is you know, up to date all the time. But basically click in here and then download it. I already downloaded it, so I'm just gonna show you the results and then I just close out of that. So basically this is what you're going to get and we can just go ahead and double click to open it and it's gonna have a folder with the actual play to device host. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click it. And this is for some of you who have the simulator. Again, you can just drag it and drop it into your simulator. And now that's going to open play to device which you can also click on it and it's going to open the remote which is going to show you an IP address and that's going to be the IP address of the remote. That will show you that either, again, on the device, on the physical device, the Apple Vision Pro, or on the actual 
Vision OS simulator. So in my case, I have 182, that 168, because that is basically my network, my Wi-Fi network at home. In your case, if you are at work, it might be a 10.0 or some other number. Just make sure that you can access that IP address, that you can communicate to that. You can try, you know, you can if you're doing this from a from a different computer, make sure that you can communicate to this computer either by trying to ping it, maybe try to establish a connection. If you can't communicate, it might be that you need to turn off the firewall. So there's just a couple of things like that that you need to watch for. So that should be ready to go. The other one, like if you're running this on a physical device, maybe by the time that you watch this, you already have one, then you're basically going to be doing this through test flight. And you're gonna be doing this on the Apple Vision Pro and you're going to be accepting and, and joining these. In this case, it's beta. By the time that you have it, it might be something, it might be production. So you can just click on download right from the Apple Store. Or if you have, if they're still in beta, then you can click on start testing and it, it's going to allow you to download it. This is similar to how iOS and you know iOS works today, where you can just download an application during during beta testing through test flight. I'm gonna do one more thing before we test it. Go into window and then package manager and make sure that you go into poly special package. And these packages I already showed you on the previous video. Again, it's going to be linked in the description. I keep saying that, but I wanna make sure that you have all the dependencies. And then just make sure that you download these play to device input settings. The setting asset is for input system package, which enables input to come from play to device host app when the editor is not in the foreground. If you already have settings, assets in your project, set to background behavior, to ignore focus and play. Anyways, just make sure that you import that. That's going to make things work for you. And then the other thing that I wanted to do here is, I'll show you this scene in just a minute. I wanna just open up a, a simpler scene, which is going to be this manipulation. This is through the samples where we were on. Basically, I downloaded the samples Poly special and uh, it's going to come with all of these. Make sure that you open the manipulation scene and then it's gonna show you this in here. So I just resize this a little bit and then go into a window and then we're gonna go into play to device and then it's gonna go ahead and put it right here and we can just make it a little bit bigger so we can see the IP address. And you can see here that it matches the IP address that I have on the simulator. So just play with that timeout if you have issues, maybe you have a slower network connection and then just make sure that you have this check this check is, is to make sure that when you hit play, it's going to connect to it. Maybe you don't want that to happen every time, so you can uncheck it I, you know, while you're doing development, and then whenever you want to go back into running this on the scene, then you can just go ahead and, and then check it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check it, and then we should be good to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And if I go here to the game view, and I were to move the cube around, you can see that the cube actually moves, and it's pretty, pretty fast though. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can see that that works. I can also go in here, right? This is the power of using these type of tools is that you can start testing sizes. You can start, you know, moving things around. In this case, this has a rigid body, so I can't really move it, but I can clone it, right? We can say, well, I wanna try and see how a smaller cube looks like here on the simulator. And then on the simulator, we can go in and like, if we wanted to change things around or if we wanted to move basically around, Maybe you just wanna move the window just to see how it looks. And then I can go here and, get, and then go closer. So in the case that I wanted to make it kinematic, we can go in here and say, well, I wanna make it kinematic and now this is gonna be floating in the air, right? I can just see how that looks with a gigantic. Maybe you wanna just look at how the materials look. Maybe you want to go here into the simulator and we go ahead and just tilt this a little bit and then go back into Unity in here. And let's say that you wanted to change multiple materials. So if you go in this case of the samples folder, there's gonna be a share and then materials, interactables. There are multiple materials in here. Looks like that's the one that I have assigned. Let's try this number two. I think number two, it's a little bit different. And let me see why that it's not assigning. So when that happens, I think it's easier just to say, well, I'm gonna assign it right here. And you can see that now the changes the, the style, let's try number four. You should be able to do that for some reason. It's not allowing me to do so, but you can also change it to that other material. And then I can also change the cube to back to that material. Maybe we wanna see how the white color looks like. So we can also change the material, I can undo. Say so I wanna undo my changes. 
So it's just really powerful, right? We can see how this looks in real time. Another thing that I can also do though, this has a lot of physics. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clone some of these and show you how, because it, it has a detector, like it, anytime it finds a cube on the, on the ground that is beyond this, it's going to spawn that cube one more time. So we can make it fall and you can see that it's going to keep spawning which is really cool because we're gonna start looking at this. I'll make these maybe a little bit bigger and then we can keep spawning and we can look at how physics react in the simulator. I can also start moving this thing around and then you can also test it. So anyways, you can see how it lost focus and then I went back into the game window and that's some of those settings that I show you that it says to run it in the background. You might need to check that. So another thing that I wanna do though, is I want to add some different models here in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my models folder and then drag and drop a cube. And it is tiny, so you can see it. It's showing in there. Maybe I'll just put it right here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And you can see that that renders correctly there. And then we can go in here into maybe interactables. Maybe let's just go ahead and give it a material. Looks like in this case, I was able to assign the material correctly. And then one other thing that I can do though, is let's say that you wanted to add a component in real time here. We can go back down here and I have something that is really cool is iTwin. And this iTwin, I think it's oh, actually do twin. And this do twin, it's really cool because I can add an animation. And if you go in here, I can activate edit mode. You can do this with any type of script. This is just a demo that I wanna show you that I, that I can test this in real time. And then I can do something like, maybe I just wanna do a rotation and maybe the direction is going to be, I think that's fine. The Y axis is gonna be, the rotation is going to be 180. I'm gonna loop this, I'm gonna do negative one. And then I think all of that looks good. We can say commit changes and now we can see that this is applying these changes in real time, which is really, really cool. Maybe I wanna change this to be faster. Maybe the direction is going to be 0.5. And then I think I like that, so I'm gonna commit it. You can see that that's rotating. Maybe you wanna change the, the actual ease. In this case, I'm gonna do it linear. I'm gonna commit it, and now we have a constant rotation. Let's say that you wanted to add another component. So we do the same thing and just add a different component. In my case, it's gonna be this one. Activate, edit mode, and then Maybe on this one, we'll just do a punch of the position. This one is really cool. We can do negative one because I wanna loop this. And then I'm gonna just lower these numbers. Maybe I'll just do zero here. This one, this one can be 0.5 and then zero. I think that's what I did last time. And then we can just do, I think that punch is too, too hard. Let's do maybe 0.1 and then we can do. So you kind of see this is in this case, it's just a different script with different behavior. We can also do, there was one in here that was cool. The elastic was pretty cool. So we can change and make those come in those changes and you can see that, that it's working correctly. Because I can play this experience and it should reflect correctly here. And now we can see the actual character in here and I can just you know play just like I would in the actual device. So we can see if I can play this, I can jump and this looks cool, I can jump to that, clone the default simulation environment, and then basically just modify it. You can also click on edit, and then just make changes to it. Basically it has a floor, generated planes, it's going to give us plane detection. So what I'm gonna do though, is if we go ahead and go back, and then enable it, you're gonna see that now we have a Unity logo, also the floor, which is the one that I want to simulate. And I also have the mixed reality seen from the polyspatial samples. So all we need to do to be able to test this is we can just go ahead and hit play. And then when I hit play, because I have XR simulation enabled, I should be able to start testing the actual ground plane detection. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. And you can see here, as I am rotating though, it's going to start giving us plane. There is an alignment here, which is, which is created. This is a plane, the classification currently is set to none. The alignment is horizontal. And you can also see here that there is an indicator that is doing a ray cast that is using those positions, which I can start you know, looking around to be able to generate more planes. And in fact, I can go that way and I can hit escape, go back, and we can just start moving and using my WASD to move around the environment. And you can see that plane detection is all getting generated. So you could use this data to do a ray cast and just make sure that things 
are correctly aligned with what's gonna happen on the real device when plane detection occurs. You can also do the same thing with hand tracking. You can also do the same thing with meshing. So in fact, you can go ahead and hit escape here and you can look at some of the simulated values in here that handle the simulated camera. And I think we also have the hand tracking. It looks like even hand tracking got also mock and then all the trackables in here. There's a mesh that got generated, another mesh, AR plane that got generated. Well, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for your support. Also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell because it's going to help me in bringing you many more videos with XR and also development. Thank you very much, guys.